Hi everyone, my name is Terry, and I'm from McGuanico Community Library. I am an employee there, but I also teach the Zentangle class that we have. Uh, the class is open to teens and adults. Um, if you have a younger sibling that, or you know your parents want to bring everybody, that's just fine. Um, anybody under the age of 15 has to have an adult with them though. Um, so you're more than welcome to join us. We Zentangle the second and the fourth Thursday of every month. Uh, it is on the events calendar on our website as well if you wish to join us. It's a pretty fun time. Um, so during the class I usually teach different patterns and Zentangle is um, just a different way of doodling. So don't think that you have to be completely precise. Um, it doesn't have to be uh, anything elegant. It can be completely whimsical. You can scribble in a section. Um, as long as it doesn't get too muddy, you can pretty much do whatever it is that you'd like. Um, so I'm just going to talk a little bit about Zentangle. I'm just going to divide my section here into some whimsical little patterns to kind of give you something to look at while we're drawing. And I'm just going to do some random patterns, I don't know, I'll just do six of them, that's fine. So um, we're going to pick, There's, I guess there's a couple different things that you want to think about with Zentangle. You want to pick a pattern that's the right size for the shape. So this one here is a little bit skinnier, this one here is a little bit wider. This one here I can do something that's maybe a little bit more loopy or a little bit more boxy or has more detail to it because it's a larger section. This one here I might do something smaller because it would fit better in the space and I can see it. Um, I, can, I can tell what's going on in there. Whenever you're doing a pattern, you want to try to make sure that you have, um, let's say you're doing a design that's rectangles, you want to have three full rows or columns. So you want to have, always think in thirds at least, at the minimum. So you want to be able to see a pattern, you want to, excuse me, to be able to understand a pattern, you want to be able to see at least three vertical or three horizontal sections of that. Uh, I'm just going to draw a bunch of different random shapes in here. And maybe I'll do some five-sided shapes, maybe I'll do some four-sided shapes. But I'm going to leave a little border around each one because I'm going to actually color it in. So I'm just going to go ahead and draw a whole bunch of stuff on here. Now that I have my background colored in, and you can do whatever kind of design that you'd like in here. I'm just going to do a series of um, straight lines. They're going to be on a diagonal. You can do them horizontal. One thing to remember when you're using a larger marker, um, kind of like this large Sharpie here, is you don't want to have the lines so close together that you lose the detail. Something like that. So this pattern here with all of this black background, if you squint your eyes, you're going to see a really dark shape. It takes a lot for this to get to disappear as you squint your eyes. So this is considered a dark uh, pattern. So now because I've drawn a dark pattern here, I don't want to go ahead and put a dark pattern on each side of that because the detail that I've drawn on here is going to get lost. So what you want to kind of do as you go around your section, so when you're doing, doing the sunflower, as you do the different petals, you want to try and maybe have a dark one here and then a lighter one and then maybe a medium um, value here, which means light or dark, a medium value here, and you can kind of rotate that around your space. They don't have to be in any sort of pattern. You don't want to have a dark pattern right next to another dark pattern because you're going to lose a lot of the detail there. So over here I'm just going to draw another pattern. This one's a little bit more of a skinny space, so I'm actually going to turn my paper here and draw my design this way so I have a little bit more of a, of a, of a space to see the pattern. So 
as you can see, I have a darker pattern here right next to a lighter pattern, and it really makes this one pop off and it doesn't interfere with this one. So I'm just gonna do a couple other patterns around here. I'm gonna do a little bit darker one on this side here. So you can do any kind of thing that you want. You can have any kinds of patterns that you want to use. They can be whimsical, they can be geometric. You can mix and match where you have some of each. It actually looks really, really great like that. And then you want to make sure that you have some light and some dark. Um, if you have something, I, I tend to be uh, somebody who likes lines. Um, I like these line patterns a little bit better. Um, so if you're going to use a lot of lines, you want to make sure that they go in different directions. You don't want to have them all be in exactly the same direction. Thank you for letting me be part of your class and teach you about some Zen Tangle patterns that you can use for your sunflowers. I can't wait to see them and I wish you the best of luck on this project. Here's a time-lapse video of some additional patterns you could try for your sunflower. Good luck!